township permission to place something there. Because I do know they, you have to pay to get married there and everything, which could just be paying the city. I don't know. I, I could be completely wrong. It could just be completely under the purview of the city. But uh, I want to say it's partly privatized still. But that's, that's just only what I from memory. But uh, I think that would be another good place for it because it's high visibility. And I just like the idea of something that reminds people, you know, basically we got the, the, the two big factions are the alt-right and the, collect, the, the control left in this country. And everybody knows the alt-right is Nazis, but we already know that Nazis are bad, but everybody seems to be forgetting that the control left are communists and that communism was also bad. I think we need to remind some of those people. Yeah, if, well, sheer numbers. Yeah, right. And that, you know, we did spend an entire freaking century trying to <laughs> undermine them uh, in some good ways and some terrible ways, but. Uh, but if you, if you calculate based on deaths per geographic area population time, the Nazis blew the communist way out of the water on deaths, though. Right. Well, the they, 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 they killed, they killed you know, yeah, in a very, very small geographic area. area. <laughs> they, they killed 20 million people. Didn't even people. think about that. <laughs> yes. In yes. less than 10 years. Thank you. Where <laughs> communism almost 100 years was right. now. Yeah, and most of the killing was done in a three-month period in the forty. Yeah, but then <laughs> it really ramped up the, the killing. Does it count if it's war? I mean, if nobody fought them, they would have killed nearly as many people. They would have only killed the Jews. Well, you know, well, they would have killed the gypsies and the the homosexual. Mm -hmm. and the, the Wait, who, who would have killed who? The Nazis killing yeah, the people. Killed the yeah, but the twenty well, million. Well, arguably. Most of that is due to war. I mean, Arguably, they've, there's war. been, I've heard theoretical yes. arguments that had Germany not become Nazi and, you know, go, you know, hard on Europe, Stalin had plans to overtake uh, Europe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Already had, uh, of the yeah so, 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 yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, there's a right? Uh, we, so, know, we never do that. In fact, yeah. Stalin, I've heard no, that Stalin we, that's, uh, that's all I have to say In the very it. beginning, they, they had an appeasement committee who are going to be active. Not people who are just placeholders to prevent someone you don't like from getting on, but people who really have an idea and a plan for how the Libertarian Party of Michigan can help make Michigan a freer, better place for us to live. So that's why I, I'm one person who's running for state executive committee, uh, hopefully chair, but if not, I'll be running for uh, my uh, congressional district. And I hope that you guys can come up with some people for the 9th, 10th, and 11th congressional districts who are committed to playing an active role in actually getting involved in Michigan state politics and helping our candidates for special elections in 2017, as well as in 2018, get something done. Let's not, all the executive, executive committee did in 2016 was throw $1,000 at Johnson Well signs. We could have done so much more to be so much more active. We had 70 candidates here in Michigan, and we did nothing to support them. Okay. We need an executive committee that's going to be active in supporting the rest of the party. But, that's what uh, I keep saying. To yeah. be fair, though, Johnston and Weld were not libertarians. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah, we know that. that. I don't remember right. the libertarian. I voted for him, but I, I mean, I, I had my objections. I voted for someone else at convention too. So, Mike, you have some. Uh, as one of those candidates. How could you uh, illustrate what the differences would be going Things forward? that we used to do were great. We used to have large statewide group fundraisers. I mean, the state party is not legally allowed to give you money directly, mm -hmm. but we can host events where you can raise money. When I proposed some stuff like that on the executive committee, the people who were on it this year said, oh, we don't have time. Oh, we don't have the personnel. Oh, we don't have the volunteers. Meanwhile, they were turning down people. They were turning down volunteers who were offering to do this stuff because they didn't agree with them personally. So it ended up being so, a bunch like a of internal party, party infighting that got in the way of supporting our candidates as best as we could. Uh, I try to get people active on the legislative committee to go and testify on bills that were being passed by the Michigan State Legislature that would affect, that would be you know, anti-libertarian and some pro-libertarian. And they, I was told that all testimony had to be prior approved by the chair in person when he got to it. And well, could hypothetically a county affiliate then send somebody? Absolutely. Now see, that's... the blackjack and that was last year, but yeah, so exactly. That's the same sort of things that county affiliates 
companies have had to do to get around that regulation okay. because they're so into micromanaging and preventing anything from being said in their name, so it prevents us from moving forward. So what we need are people on the executive committee who are going to be active and are going to have good ideas to support liberty in Michigan. So I just hope that anyone who's gonna be a delegate next month to state convention will think about that when you decide who you're going to vote for for the executive committee. Are they expecting the size of the executive committee? Yes, it's going to be 19 people. For the, it has it been nine. Seven, it nine. Nine. It's nine now, and it's going to go up to 19 okay, next so month. more than double. So, and there's, there's openings. I don't know of anyone who's running for congressional representative in the 9th and 10th, and you said also 11th Eleven. district. Okay. They're um, covered yeah. by Macomb. Considering 11th. Uh, we need, like I said, if you're uh, active, I'm if you're real. serious wow. about getting involved in the executive committee and fighting for liberty in Michigan, then you're the man for the job. No matter what you are ideologically, let's stop getting into wars and infighting over ideology and start focusing on who's going to get to work for Michigan. Anyway, that's all I have to oh, say. How's that work now? So like the 10th is half in Oakland, half in the home. I mean, now there's... Very It's... Where you live, the delegates who live in that congressional district will get to vote on the congressional representative. So, so basically, be, some of us voting against some Oakland people. Right. You guys will have to caucus together with everyone okay. in the 10th, if you're in the 10th. Yeah. And then you guys will decide who your guy or your gal is to be on the executive committee. This okay. year, so. it does not have to be a person representing that district. It doesn't have to be in that district. Next year it does. It, it, I believe it does this year. We just this talked year, about that at this, the executive this, committee. This um, year, in the bylaws, it's written that the person does not have to be. The changes haven't been affected yet. Right? Oh, <laughs> oh, is that what it is? That, that's what no, it, I'm saying, yeah. This year, it, the representative for a district can be anybody. Next year, it has to be somebody from within that district. That is news to me, and also they said the exact opposite at our last LEC meeting. I'll have to look so up. I, could be wrong. I would prefer to do it the way you're talking about, but uh, if that's the way you think going into it, you might catch some flack from the existing uh, directorship. So do you have a They're list of uh, the open seats and then the roles? All the seats are open. Uh, well, the, the chairmanship is something people are running for. Uh, there's vice. There's two vice chairs. Uh, one who's in charge of affiliate support and one who's uh, in charge of political directorship. There's the secretary. There's the treasurer, and that's the five officers. Then there's 14 congressional district representatives. Okay, so it's kind of like I guess how we used to have like. At large directors basically are now divided it's up exactly, by exactly. Okay. and there's a lot more of them instead yeah. of five there's 14 yeah. so it's okay. a yeah. much bigger committee yeah. uh for better or for Voice worse true. and uh yeah we're gonna have regional representation interesting so, so that's we've never yeah, yeah the at large directors were never really like tied to the region or correct they, so, so it could have always it could have just been all metro detroiters uh, sometimes it was yeah. mostly people from the southeast yeah. michigan so you know, Very interesting. So, All right. Yeah, so and that's what we're looking at. So, uh -huh. like I said, just, just, just don't pick based on ideology. I know it's tempting to go with a guy like, I agree with everything he says. Go for people who are hard workers because that's what we need. This year, that's what we were missing from the executive committee. There was no one willing to do anything. Everyone was just trying to impede everyone else. And it, it really could have gone a lot better for 2016. How much better could our electoral success have been if we would have had an active Exactly. They came off as more. They came off as more like linos. Yeah. Well, all they did was, like I said, they threw a thousand dollars at some signs. They banned this guy, and at the very end, they got you guys affiliated. So you know, hats off to them for that. But, oh, that was a good thing. Yeah. 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 If I was giving my two cents. I got a lot of support for the creation of this affiliate, but um, I didn't really hear much in terms of my state representative campaign. Right. And that's too bad. Anyway, that's, I, I won't take any more of you guys' time. That's okay. just my, uh, my plea for the delegates. What's, uh, what's Tim running for? He's running Vice for chair. the Vice, Vice Chair of uh, the Affiliate uh, Support position. He's trying to take a job, essentially. <laughs> and then what's the other one doing? Uh, what currently is the political director, which is not oh, okay. what Scotty Bowman does. Yeah. Basically in charge of recruiting candidates. Uh, Stuff like that. Scotty going to run for that? No, Greg Stemfel's the one person I heard who really goes. Oh, wow. Thank yeah. you, sir. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's the leader of yeah, the Yeah, I don't know. He's the leader of the Yeah, he's the chair of the Chicken Marcella to go. 
last minute text from the wife. Where the wife? All right, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to turn the song on. Um, <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.